Welcome to Public Health On Call, a new podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Our focus is the novel coronavirus. I'm Josh Sharfstein, a faculty member at Johns Hopkins and also a former secretary of Maryland's Health Department. Our goal with this podcast is to bring evidence and experts to help you understand today's news about the novel coronavirus and what it means for tomorrow. If you have questions, you can email them to publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. That's publichealthquestion at jhu.edu for future podcast episodes. Today, Stephanie Desmond brings back Dr. Albert Wu, a physician and public health researcher at Johns Hopkins. They discuss how COVID-19 isn't just a respiratory illness and how we keep learning more with every passing week about how the novel coronavirus impacts the heart, the brain, the kidneys, and even the toes. Let's listen. Albert Wu, thanks so much for joining me. Why, I am um, just delighted to be here. Thank you. So I feel like we might be entering a stage of sort of social distancing fatigue. Mobile data showing that more people are leaving their homes. We've all seen those pictures of packed beaches and the mall teeming with people in Washington and parks. I think people might be starting to get tired of this, but at the same time, from a clinical standpoint, sounds like we need to keep this up. I would agree with you 100%, though I will say that this is very predictable. Um, There's a bit of research on the fact that After disasters, there are predictable ways that it affects people's mental health. And there's an initial impact phase, followed by a kind of heroic phase. And then there's, after the adrenaline runs out, there's sort of a longer phase of fatigue and disillusionment and uh, maybe cynicism and crankiness. And I think that is where we are as a society we're getting kind of tired of this. That's not to say that this isn't still all absolutely necessary if you would uh, like to avoid getting or spreading COVID. So the same things apply. Wash your hands, wear a mask when you're out in public to protect both yourself and others. And um, just because you're wearing the mask doesn't mean that you shouldn't also keep your distance. So we've learned a lot about COVID-19 in the past two months of this. And um, I know we all knew the symptoms as fever and a shortness of breath and some coughing, but things have evolved. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yeah, so we are still discovering all the ways that the virus can affect different organs and different systems in the body. The fact is that even though the coronavirus or the SARS-CoV-2 virus is a respiratory virus, it actually affects the whole body. So in addition to fever and shortness of breath that you get with any viral illness, like the flu, it can also cause sore throat, fever, chills or shaking chills, muscle aches, headache, sore throat, and even the new loss of a sense of smell or a sense of taste. And these are because the virus is attacking cells in all different parts of the body and different organs and different systems. And you know, I know we talk a lot about, you know, older people are at highest risk of death and serious illness, which remains the case. But we're also seeing things like strokes and seemingly healthy 20 and 30 year olds. We've heard about clotting problems and something I'm seeing called COVID toes, which seems to be sort of inflammation in the feet of young people. Are we going to keep discovering these things? And should we be on the lookout for for these complications? Well, absolutely. You know, so we haven't known this virus for very long, and we are still observing all the things that could possibly happen. We're honestly still learning case by case. And uh, there's things that are happening that we don't really fully understand, or at least we don't really understand exactly why they're happening. Uh, We are learning that the virus can affect just about every major organ in the body, the brain, the heart, the kidneys, in addition to the lungs, and can cause some other problems which seem a little bit mysterious. One of them 
is problems with blood clotting, which may be the uh, part of the origin anyway of this uh, COVID toe problem. There's at least a few ways theoretically, we don't know that this is what is exactly true, but there's at least a few ways theoretically that this can work. Um, the virus can affect the cells of those organs directly and cause damage. And then uh, damage can be caused by the body's own immune system, uh, which causes a kind of innocent bystander effects onto those organs. There's inflammation as the body tries to fight off an infection, and that inflammation can injure organs. And then finally, if the virus causes organs to fail, that can cause other kinds of injuries. So your kidneys may fail not because the virus is attacking them directly, but because they're not getting enough oxygen and they can run into problems that way. Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, you make a really good point. This is still something new that we're just really learning about it. From the things that we've just seen appear in the last two months, it feels like, I guess it uh, reinforces that it's not the flu. This is not the flu, and um, we uh, still have a lot to learn. I think we really need more data, and as unfortunately there are more and more cases, we're seeing the many different ways that the virus can affect people, um, sometimes often older people, but sometimes people who are quite young, even children, and we don't know exactly why that is. There may be some things, some genetic things about individual people that make them more susceptible to the effects of the virus, and there may be slightly different strains of the virus that are in different places, which um, in some cases are more virulent, are more destructive than in others. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, People are also getting sick still from other things. But it seems to me, and I think some of the data show, that people are not seeking out the medical care that they did before. I mean, the ERs are not full, is my understanding. Can you talk to me about that? Well, there is a really growing number of reports of people who who are not seeking care for problems that prior to COVID would have sent them straight to the doctor. Um, There are people who say, I have patients who say, well, I didn't want to bother the doctor at this time. I know you're so busy. And there are other people who say, I'm not going to that ER. They're basically afraid to go to the ER because they do not want to catch COVID. Ironically, uh, emergency rooms are very safe places these days. The workers there are taking absolutely every precaution they could. And the funny thing is, is that the waiting lines have never been shorter. The problem is, of course, that people can wait until things are too late. Uh, I've heard about people who've had chest pain at home and decided to take an antacid and just hope it went away, and it wound up being a heart attack. They wound up in the hospital and um, may have sustained more damage than they otherwise would have. It may be too late for them to get some treatments, and they may wind up sicker in the future because they really just waited too long. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that you have friends and family who ask you sort of where we're going with all of this, sort of what the future looks like with COVID-19. What do you tell them? So I tell them, first of all, that I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know. And I certainly don't know exactly how long this is going to go on. But what I'm quite sure about is that we're not going to wake up one day and everything will be back to normal. I think we're going to be wearing masks and social distancing um, and washing our hands, at least in some settings, for quite some time. I can't imagine right now the thought of going to a football game and sitting in the stands with 100,000 other people and not taking at least some precautions. I think that's just not going to happen. The same is true for any other large gathering. And there may be another wave of um, the coronavirus, too perhaps when the next flu season comes around in the winter. So I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I think that things will not all be completely back to business as normal as it was a million years ago. Um, when we started this quarantine, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, was, it seems like such a long time ago, but it was really just um, uh, you know, a few weeks, a couple of months. 
Great. And it is very interesting just sort of how much we have learned so far and how much we're going to continue to learn. There are many things that we, I hope, will learn. Uh, we're learning much more about the virus. I think there are some hopeful signs about progress with treatments that may at least have some beneficial effects. And there are many, many efforts ongoing to try to find a vaccine. Uh, some of them are already undergoing human testing. So I am a little bit optimistic. That's terrific. Albert Wu, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Thank you for listening to Public Health on Call, a new podcast from the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Please send questions to be covered in future podcasts to publichealthquestion at jhu.edu. This podcast is produced by Josh Sharfstein, Lindsay Smith-Rogers, and Lamare Morales. Audio production by Niall Owen-McCusker and Spencer Greer, with support from Chip Hickey. Distribution by Nick Moran. Thank you for listening.